Greetings, everyone. This is Dr. Rodney Thomas, and today we're going to talk about the risk hedging supply chain strategy. So what is risk hedging? Isn't that some kind of finance concept for trading stocks or currencies? Well, yes and no. Finance hedges some types of trading risks, but in a supply chain context, risk hedging strategy is all about dealing with supply disruptions. More specifically, risk hedging is a supply chain strategy that has the goal to share and pool resources to collectively share and minimize supply disruption risks. It takes a lot of coordination, collaboration, and cooperation to pull off, but it is a vital approach to supply chains that frequently experience supply problems. Now, the concept of risk hedging builds on Fisher's original work that identified two basic supply chain strategies. That is the efficient supply chain strategy, as well as the responsive supply chain strategy. These strategic approaches to supply chain management address varying conditions of demand certainty or uncertainty by identifying appropriate actions for functional or innovative product types. And these strategies work well under the right conditions, but they assume that supply characteristics are stable. Although that assumption holds true in many contexts, there are also times when supply is erratic, unpredictable, or uncertain. When supply is uncertain, efficient and responsive supply chain strategies are inappropriate. When supply is uncertain, making assumptions based on supply stability can lead to problems. So another professor named Hao Li proposed an uncertainty matrix for supply chain strategies. And as a side note, Professor Li is as close to a celebrity supply chain scholar as you will find. He's at Stanford, he has some of the most influential supply chain research in the world, and is regularly sought out for his supply chain expertise. Dr. Lee's uncertainty matrix highlights the idea that supply chain strategies cannot be thought of in terms of just addressing demand uncertainty. That unidimensional focus is flawed and can lead to all kinds of cost or service problems. Therefore, as supply chain managers, we also need to simultaneously consider supply uncertainty. This second dimension for consideration makes a lot of sense because supply chain management usually comes down to integrating supply and demand in the most efficient and effective manner. For now, we're just gonna focus on a risk hedging strategy that is recommended when demand uncertainty is low, but supply uncertainty is high. To illustrate the concept of risk hedging, let's think about predictable supply flows in a basic supply chain. Raw materials or subassemblies move from suppliers to manufacturers. The manufacturers then convert these unfinished goods into finished products. These products are moved to a distribution center where they are then sent to multiple retail locations for consumers to purchase. This basic supply chain works fine as long as all sources of supply keep flowing throughout the supply chain. But what happens when there's some type of supply disruption? or when a supplier cannot deliver to a manufacturer. Perhaps the supplier has ongoing quality problems, employee turnover, or erratic lead times that lead to sporadic deliveries. Regardless of the root cause of the supply chain disruption, everything stops flowing and retail shelves become empty of products that consumers want or need. So what should a supply chain manager do? When a supplier continually causes supply disruptions, then a risk hedging strategy is appropriate. With this strategy, supply chain managers could seek out multiple sources of supply to spread out the risk and minimize supply disruptions. Although one supplier may have a delivery issue for a few days, it's much less likely that three suppliers would all experience a problem at the same time. By adding additional sources of supply, managers spread out the potential risk of supply disruptions. The more sources of supply that you have, then the less risk you have. Similar problems can exist with a manufacturer of finished goods. There may be times when production schedules get delayed and cause supply disruptions throughout the rest of the supply chain. It might be due to an equipment failure, missing materials, accidents, etc. All kinds of things can happen, but the end result is a supply disruption that disappoints customers. What can a supply chain manager do? Well, much like with suppliers, if a manufacturer continues to cause supply disruptions, then managers should hedge their risk and obtain additional manufacturing sources to spread out the risk of delayed production. As these supplier and manufacturer examples demonstrate, 
a risk hedging strategy would discourage single sources of supply, especially from unreliable providers of goods or services. Although having multiple sources of supply helps hedge risks, there may be some situations where the supply base is evolving and few options are available. In these situations, expanding the number of suppliers or manufacturers is not feasible. What can a supply chain manager do to prevent empty shelves further downstream? Well, a risk hedging strategy also suggests that safety stock levels can be increased in various locations to create inventory buffers that help a supply chain function during short supply disruptions. These inventory buffers, or I like to call them buffer stock, can exist anywhere in a supply chain, and they are simply held to account for supply uncertainty. Think of it like stocking up on milk and bread before a big snowstorm hits. You know you're gonna need these items, but you don't know how long it'll take before you can go get them again. Therefore, you buy extra to get through the storm. Well, congratulations, you just implemented your own personal risk hedging supply chain strategy. Here's another scenario. There are also times when a supply disruption may come from a firm's own internal distribution network. Just like problems can arise with suppliers or manufacturers, things can also go wrong in a distribution center and create a supply disruption for individual store locations. What can a supply chain manager do? A risk hedging strategy is all about sharing and pooling resources to minimize supply disruptions. Well, store level inventories are part of that same network of shared resources. So there are times when one store may transship some of its extra inventory to another store that is in need of that inventory due to a supply disruption. Although transshipping increases costs by moving the product again, it can be an effective way to address individual store level supply disruptions. Another form of risk hedging supply chain strategy deals with a common pool of inventory that is shared by multiple supply chain members who are also competitors. I like to call this coopetition risk hedging because it requires cooperation between competitors. For example, in some large cities, competing hospitals all use a shared distribution facility and a common pool of inventory to minimize the risk of supply disruptions. This approach takes advantage of the statistical concept of aggregation. Aggregation suggests that demand variability is reduced by accumulating demand across locations or products. Aggregation also allows high demand in one location to be offset by low demand in another. So what's this have to do with the hospital example? Well, imagine if each hospital had its own distribution center with its own inventory. One hospital would likely have too much of an item and another would not have enough. But because they did not share the risk, they could not offset each other. As a result, one hospital might run out of a needed item that could cost somebody their life. However, by cooperating, competitors could share resources, drive down the risk of supply chain failure. Another variant of coopetition risk hedging strategy implementation is to have individual locations share inventory with each other. Similar to our previous retail example, hospitals can also transship needed items to each other if the shared distribution center runs out. This type of resource sharing requires tremendous amounts of communication, collaboration, and coordination, but helps address supply disruptions. So let's dive a little deeper into why, when you are a manager, you might choose to use a risk hedging supply chain strategy. Risk hedging supply chain strategy shares disruption risks and minimizes supply disruption effects. It takes advantage of shared resources and aggregation advantages to deal with supply uncertainty. It is the best approach to managing cost and service trade-offs when supply conditions are not stable. When should we use a risk hedging supply chain strategy? Quite simply, the Lee uncertainty matrix tells us that risk hedging supply chain strategy is appropriate when demand uncertainty is low and supply uncertainty is high. So if we look back at Lee's uncertainty matrix, and we want to determine the best conditions for risk hedging strategy, we want a low demand uncertainty, and that's your functional products. Risk hedging should be used with functional products that have more stable and predictable demand. You typically see this with longer product lifecycle products that have lower inventory carrying costs and low margins. These also tend to be products with high volumes per SKU that have lower stockout and obsolescence costs.
Lee's uncertainty matrix also shows us that in addition to low demand uncertainty, we should use a risk hedging strategy if we also have high supply uncertainty. Risk hedging strategy is typically used with evolving or uncertain supply bases that are vulnerable to breakdowns or have inconsistent lead times. Likewise, sources of supply that seem to have quality problems, reliability issues, extended processing times, capacity issues, or difficulty with change and flexibility tend to have inherent risks that need to be hedged. So let's summarize. In this lesson, we talked about a risk hedging supply chain strategy and how the concept developed. We looked at examples of risk hedging, why to use this strategy, and most importantly, when to use it. We even showed that all of you are intuitive risk hedgers when snowstorms are in the forecast.